I think you guys are pretty well aware by now that on this channel I don't very frequently discuss Apple products. I just am not invested into the Apple ecosystem and it's not an area of great expertise for me. But as we begin talking more and more about Apple making a foldable iPhone, I do think things are getting quite a bit more interesting, not just because of what a folding iPhone will be like, but because of the impacts that it can and will have on the foldable phone market, which is something that I am actually quite interested in. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this article that I threw together over on ShaneCraig.tech. We're going to talk about the current rumors for a foldable iPhone, and then I'm going to talk briefly about why I think even if you are an Android user who uses a folding phone or is interested in buying a folding Android phone, you should still be excited about this. So apparently with this folding iPhone, we are looking at something around the size of an iPad mini 7.8 inches. To give you just a little bit of context here, this Oppo Find N5 is 8.12 inches diagonal, if I'm not mistaken. The big difference here, though, is that we are hearing, again, these are rumors, and before I go any further, remember, like all rumors, take them with a heaping pinch of salt, because they're rumors, and they could be wrong. But we've heard from leakers like Digital Chat Station that it could be something close to a 4x3 aspect ratio. Those of us who really enjoyed the original Pixel Fold may have their ears perking up just a little bit. Now, no, that was not a 4x3 aspect ratio in our display, but it was closer to 4x3 than any of the other foldables on the market. We have also seen, rumored, reported, that we're looking at something like a 5.8 inch cover display, which is actually even smaller than the original Pixel Fold. Now that might be just due to the aspect ratios, but what it seems like we're getting with this rumored folding iPhone is a device that is somewhat similar to an iPhone mini for the cover display that opens up into something like an iPad mini for that inner display. And again, we do kind of have to draw those parallels with the original Pixel Fold. It sounds like they're leaning more that way than they are leaning in the direction of the other sort of mainstream foldable phones like this Oppo Find N, which is a much more traditional, fairly large cover display and then a fairly large closer to square inner display, although this is a bit taller than it is wide. You know what I mean. It's more square than what I think we're potentially going to get with a device like this. And I haven't done the geometry to confirm this, but does this sound like a device that might open up into a wider than it is tall aspect ratio? Again, Pixel Fold users, that might be pretty interesting to see as no one else is doing that anymore. I've said it once and I'll say it again. I think that that is the most sensible form factor for a folding phone. All of them now have very large cover displays which open into even larger inner displays. I think it's much more useful to have a mini phone so you get the sort of utility of having a small form factor phone, but you get none of the downsides. Hey, this screen is a bit too small for what I'm trying to do. I can open it and now it's much larger. So you get kind of the best of both worlds. Apple might be you know, maybe going with that approach. We've also seen reports from another tech leaker that Apple is using something called liquid metal in the hinge of the device. This, quote, metallic glass is apparently more resistant to bending and flexing. It's two and a half times stronger than other titanium alloys. Now, keep in mind, liquid metal does not literally mean metal in a liquid state. It refers to a material created through a unique casting technique that results in a highly durable, strong, and precise metal component. And Apple apparently bought the rights to use this sort of material from a company called Liquid Metal something like 15 years ago. But the rumor is they're going to be using something like that in their hinge, and then in some way this might allow them to have a crease that is even harder to detect than what we have seen on current devices. As far as what this device might cost, it's been kind of hard to pin down, and I think it's going to remain fairly hard to pin down. It's not even an announced device, but Mark Gurman, who is pretty well in the know, has indicated in the past that it's likely to be quite a bit more expensive than the other iPhone devices. Duh, I think that is 
fairly obvious. But we've also gotten a post, I think literally yesterday, from Digital Chat Station over on Threads saying that it was going to be around $2,000. Keep in mind that Google's Pixel Fold has been around $1,800. The Z Fold 6, I think, was closer to $1,900. OnePlus Open was closer to $1,600 or $1,700. So a $2,000 price tag for Apple's foldable doesn't really surprise me in any way. I think that they're likely to lean into this more premium pricing. It's something that they've done in the past to communicate a more premium product. It's basically a marketing trick. There's a reason they were selling wheels, caster wheels, for their computer for $700. Were they worth $700? Absolutely not. But by pricing them at $700, they are communicating that it is a very premium thing, that it is something aspirational, and it actually does allow them to sell more products at a much higher profit margin, and I would imagine Apple might do something very similar here. Keep in mind, Google has recently done the same thing with their Pixel devices. Each year, it seems like the prices creep up a little bit. Everyone says, this is going to be a disaster. It's going to sell worse. And what ends up happening is they sell more of them because it communicates aspirational premium product and people buy into that. And heck, maybe they're going to be able to solve the crease problem. Maybe they're going to be able to solve the fragile inner screen problem. That remains to be seen, but it's Apple, and every once in a while, they do something kind of cool. As for when it's coming, we've heard 2026, we've heard 2027, we have no idea. Most recent rumors and speculation has been 2026, but we really can't say for sure. What I want to talk about now, though, is the impact that this is going to have on the broader foldable market. It might sound crazy, but I really do believe that Apple selling folding smartphones is actually going to, in a roundabout way, benefit Android OEMs who are also selling folding phones. Maybe not the smaller ones, but I think the general market is going to benefit from this because what have folding phones long needed? They have needed solidification. They have needed legitimizing. People have had these little concerns about their durability, about their staying power. Maybe they're going to be the next 3D TV. They're just going to go away. Why would I invest in something like this that might get abandoned next year? Oh, Apple's making one now? I guess they're not going away. That's the general idea. If more people are buying folding smartphones in general, that's going to be good for folding smartphones in general because it's going to push other OEMs to go even further, to compete directly with Apple. They're going to be even more forced to innovate with their foldable technology, improving their hardware, improving their software, improving their pricing. This is all going to be good for us folding phone users. I also don't think that Apple is going to swoop in and just scoop up all of the folding phone people, leaving no one left to buy Z Fold devices or Pixel Fold devices. I actually think that those are just different customers in general. Those of us that are buying Z Folds, I don't mean this as a pejorative, obviously, but we are like the nerdiest of the nerds. It just is what it is. And we don't tend to be big Apple users. I think that those are just different customers. And look, there are exceptions to that rule. Some of you are Apple users and you buy folding phones. And I, I'm not saying you don't exist. I'm just speculating, to a large degree, these are separate groups of people. Over the last few months, we've seen quite a bit of evidence that Google is taking large screen devices and productivity on these large screen devices even more seriously. We have seen improvements to the desktop mode and hints that that might be coming sooner rather than later. It appears that they're trying to turn Android into this seamless OS, one OS to rule them all, from phone to tablet folding phone, I think, included there, and also even a laptop form factor, potentially, you know, kind of rolling Chrome OS out of the way, allowing Android to take over for those Chrome OS devices. And I think that with Apple now even more directly competing with Google in this folding phone segment only is going to intensify that competition. And competition is a good thing for consumers. Yes, there is a chance that this could spell doom for some of the smaller OEMs trying to make foldable phones. They could be squeezed out of the market by Apple's entry. 
But I think that for the bigger OEMs, for your Samsungs, your Googles, your Oppo slash OnePluses of the world, I think that they're likely to stick around and compete tooth and nail for our uh, very large amounts of money for these phones. And that is why I think that this is actually a good thing. It's only going to bring more innovation and more competition. But guys, I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. How interested would you be in an Apple foldable? Maybe you've just been waiting on that Apple foldable this entire time, and you think that bit about folding phone users not being Apple users is a load of nonsense. Let me know in those comments down below. Do you think I'm right or wrong about this actually being good for the legitimization, the solidifying that folding phones are here to stay? Again, let me know in those comments down below. Subscribe for more content just like this, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.